Buttons, or the lack thereof, have been the talk of the town around the Mark 8. Virtually buttonless interior. And do you know what? I don't like it at all. But I don't like these buttons. Do, but they are not as good as physical buttons. Volkswagen has gotten rid of every single physical button, apparently completely unaware that every car company that's done this has had to put them back in for the next generation. The buttons being stripped out of these cars brought a lot of opinions about how much of a problem that was, but are they right? As humans, we all have a hard time with change. So like many others, my reaction to the buttonless Mark 8 interior was, Urgh. see, I'm getting kind of old, but I'm not, head to the pharmacy at eight years old to pick up mom a pack of smokes and her happy pills old. I'm finding out the world is a cold, dark place from Oregon Trail old. Mary has dysentery, she died. <laughs> In the late 90s, or as the kids call it these days, the late 1900s, cell phones were starting to hit their stride. By the early 2000s, everybody had a cell phone. Maybe you had a Blackberry, or maybe you had a Nextel and had walkie-talkie conversations in the line at the bank talking about what you were planning to eat for dinner, which is absolutely a conversation you should have in a public place for everybody around you to hear. But remember, when the original iPhone came out in 2006, there was a huge controversy about the lack of a keyboard. At the time, I had a Motorola Q, and I remember thinking I could never get by without a physical keyboard. How would anybody even be able to write a text message on a glass screen? My question is, are buttonless interiors the new normal, or are they the automatic seatbelts of our time? The Mark 8 has normal switches on the windows, mirrors, and unlock buttons. Otherwise, the interior of this car has haptic feedback buttons, touch-sensitive buttons, or no buttons at all. The buttons you would miss the most would be the HVAC controls and the radio controls. To me, the most prominent one is the volume knob for the radio. When first driving the car, these both immediately stood out to me. For the volume controls, you have two separate options. You have the touch-sensitive slider that's underneath the radio here, or the haptic button on the left side of the steering wheel. For me, the slider underneath the radio felt like a bit of a reach for every volume adjustment. So my go-to was the buttons on the steering wheel to go up and down for volume. The problem I had here is that whenever I wanted to rock out, I had to hit this plus arrow quite a few times and the haptic buttons don't like being pressed over and over and over again. Let's rock! Oh, yeah, what I later found out though is that in addition to the button control on the steering wheel, they also had a swipe function that would allow you to control the volume just by swiping left and right. Using the swipe function on that volume button actually got rid of any frustrations I had around that button. Now I will be doing a wrap up, giving my complete opinion about all the buttons at the end of this video. Lastly, there's no mute button or knob to quickly turn all the way down. Sure, you can swipe a bunch of times on the steering wheel controls or push the button a lot of times, but we found that if you swipe all the way from plus to minus, it automatically mutes. We also found you can do a swipe down and make a shortcut to mute there. The only gripe I have about all this radio stuff is that the center control for the radio is not lit, like at all. And I'm not talking about, yo, this alpha dog, unicorn, mega milk, honey stuff is lit, fam. <laughs> We're talking like you can't see anything at night at all. The best you have are these half-hearted braille bumps to separate the sliders from the heat control and the volume control. We're looking at possible solutions to this problem for our customers. The best we have so far is driving around with this light on your head used by our technicians and Cave explorers. You fucking blind yourself. I just looked in the mirror and I fucking couldn't see anything. <laughs> blind myself. While we're on the subject of part solutions, if you didn't know, shopping on our site for parts for your VW Rowdy helps support videos just like this one. So instead of going to websites that rhyme with schmeecs.com, why don't you check out shopdap.com for parts for your Volkswagen or Audi? The climate controls on this car are as follows. The climate control button in the center, which brings up your climate control screen. The sliders underneath the radio to control left and right climate controls. The heated steering button right here on the bottom of your steering wheel. The front and rear defrost buttons underneath the headlight switch and the rear temperature controls here and here and the rear heated seat controls, all of which your kids are going to kick the living shit out of. To start these controls under the radio to control temperature, I never use them, like at all. Accessing these controls is really easy because you can just push this button to control the screen, bring it up, and then just plus and minus as you go. You also can swipe your finger here to allow that to work as well, all of which is easier than finding this particular hole. They could have put something so much more useful. Oh, 100%. <laughs> that, this, this is so useless. 
Honestly, they'd be better off. This would be better if it was a heated seat button and a cool button, a, like a touch pad that was just like heat, cool. And then just leave this on the touch screen. You got that, Hans? And Franz? This is the time on sprockets when we dance. To me, these do not feel intuitive to use at all in a normal circumstance, which is why I don't use them. And also, if you remember, the no light situation right here. Fun fact about this non-lit portion, we looked into possibly maybe putting drilling holes or modifying it in some way to light it from the bottom. And it's part of this radio. So you can't do that. Ah. The heated and air conditioned seats are controlled right here at the bottom for left and for right. Now I've seen a lot of people complain about these controls and how they're hard to access and small. One thing that's really cool is they have a really cool UI on this where if you want heated seats, you can just double tap your fingers on this and it puts it full on. You can have heated seats and cool seats. Yeah, that way you can have so much air conditioning in your rectum. <laughs> just shoot your rectum is just so warm and cold at the same time. <laughs> it's, it's like icy hot for, for your whole body. Now I know you're thinking, Paul, that's not even a backlit control. That shortcut is useless if it's dark outside. And in my opinion, that's not how I would actually have that happen. Mostly because if you use your heated seats, you are going to be using that as soon as you get in your car. And so you're gonna do that as soon as you get in before you're even driving on the road. In regards to the heated steering wheel, some people have said this. And so the heated steering wheel control, which protrudes further towards you than any other control on the wheel, is constantly and accidentally activated while you're driving. Now I intentionally waited to make this video because I wanted to have enough seat time in the car before I gave you my feedback on the button situation. This car now has 1,500 miles on it and I've been driving it for over a month. During that time, I've only turned on this heated steering wheel button one time by mistake. And I was doing one of these guys where I was turning the wheel like this in a packing lot. I was hard packing. Were you grocery shopping? I was hard packing my Mach 8. Now this one feels subjective because depending on hand placement on the steering wheel, hand size, and lack of situational awareness of knowing where buttons are on your steering wheel, so maybe you drive like this. I can see how that happens. <laughs> If you drive like that, you're a certified <laughs> psychopath. <laughs> you get in, you start up your car, and you just like this. Now, I have added a survey to a Mark 8 specific Facebook group, which we will link to in the description, but here are the results of people having problems with mistakenly pressing their heated steering wheel button. If you watched our track video, you probably saw me and Charles struggle with turning traction control off on this car. Hey, Paul. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta turn off my tracks control. Oh, okay. I don't know where it is. He forgot to read the owner's manual. Sport, sport. But what if you put it in custom? Let's see. Uh, there we go. Did you find it? We're in trouble now. <laughs> I don't think so. This was formerly a button, but is now something controlled within the infotainment unit. Now, Megan from Volkswagen, when I picked up this car and we did our event and all the other stuff, she helped me set up some stuff in this car when I first got it because she's product manager for Mark 8. And she set up an ESC shortcut, but I am dumb. And dumb people are dumb. And that means that I forgot, <laughs> because I'm dumb. Now, the long way to do that is this. You go to vehicle, then you go to vehicle, spin it around, go to brakes, there it is, ESE off. Now that is not very intuitive because why is the trash control in the rear of the car? Good question, I don't have an answer to that. Now if you have the shortcut, you just swipe down. If you have the shortcut, you just swipe down. We can't show these stupid bugs that are happening. Now if you have the shortcut, you just swipe down, you hit the ESC button, and then you turn it off. Boom. Yeah, that easy, if you're not dumb. You can turn the light on. That are also touch sensitive, in case you didn't know. They're gonna be back here all day just doing that, and they're gonna drive you up the wall. They will drive you nuts. That's what kids do. They're born to test your, your stress level and how high your blood pressure can get without your actually having an aneurysm. That's what their goal in life is. 
They're like, oh, is this a brand new car? Yeah. With a thousand miles a on brand it? New, a brand new car. It's destroyed. Let me see if I can find some crayons to leave in here and <laughs> melt into your air conditioned seats. You get a Jolly Rancher stuck to your seat. Sweet. <laughs> So maybe you watch this and you're wondering if there are better ways to transition through screens because you don't like touch sensitive stuff. They also have where you can use the force like this. What usefulness does that bring to this? <laughs> I'm not really sure. <laughs> I'm not really sure. I find this to be particularly useless other than just having being a cool feature you can tell people that you could do. That's about all I got there. With the force, can you poke it with the force? Oh no. <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> it's like uh, when you tell like kids that there's a quarter in their ear, it's exactly <laughs> as useful as that. <laughs> you may know that the touch sensitive stuff on your phone doesn't work when you have gloves on, but if you have gloves that have touch sensitive parts, they can work. This is a standard glove. This is one that has a touch sensitive tip on there. Let's see if it works with a standard glove for the touch sensitive parts. Oh, it actually kind of does. That's, that's interesting. So even with a, wow, this is pretty sensitive. So even with a non touch sensitive glove, this actually works. As you just saw, it doesn't work on my phone, but it does work here. That worked with this glove. Let's take a look at our non janky glove. This is a glove that is mine. It has touch sensitive tips on the pointer finger and then on the thumb as well. So we can look at that and see it functions as well. And it probably functions a little better than the other glove, but not really, uh, not really significantly. So you don't even need to have a touch sensitive glove to make any of this work. Ambient lights, these sweet lights that are right here. Look at that. <laughs> You can change them, <laughs> customize them, however you want. Mm. But I also really think the purple is cool. I'm a big fan of the purple. You also got mood. So if you want an infinity stone, you pick this one if you want an infinity stone. So I don't know if it, maybe the navigation takes you to them. I'm not sure how that works. I think in honor of Thanos, we should leave it purple. May you rest in peace. RIP Thanos. So this is the part of the video where you're expecting me to dump all over this car. And I'm not gonna do that because I'm not a joiner. And that's what everybody online is doing. And frankly, I don't feel like the lack of buttons in this car takes away from the overall feel of this car. Frankly, many of the initial frustrations I had around the lack of buttons within this car were overcome by the UI and the interface once I learned it. And I know you might be thinking that I'm shilling for VW. Uh, don't know why I would do that, because I pay for this car. This is the car I bought. It's my car. I have to fucking drive it every day. So if I hated it, I would tell you I hated it. I think a lot of the complaining around the haptic feedback stuff is a little bit different than normal buttons. Uh, is it something that I find to be something you even need to get used to? No, not really. It's slightly different, but not a problem. Uh, again, I think the haptic feedback buttons is mostly just uh, old man. Back in my day, uh, we walked up to the school both ways without feet. Uh, I don't think this is a major problem. There are a few things that I do have criticisms for. Uh, mainly, if I had a magic wand to wave, as to what the perfect things would be. I would rather have a volume knob back. I would rather have a heater, a blower motor control knob back. And I would rather have knobs for both left and right HVAC temperature controls. That would be my ideal circumstance. The rest of this could stay the way it is and I would be perfectly happy. And even in some places, for example, the volume on the controls in the steering wheel, in my opinion, not the haptic feedback portion, but the slide portion, is actually a better experience than an actual physical button because on a physical button, you have to press it 16 times over and over and over and over again, where I can just swipe three times over and the things that nearly top volume of the car. So there are circumstances where these haptic buttons which that are touch sensitive are actually better than a regular button. People do talk about the everything being piano black and I can tell you, before this video, we had to clean the, the dash off because there was fingerprints all over everything. You're gonna have to clean your car if you're a gross person like I am. 
uh, you're gonna have to do some maintenance to deal with it. So that's my opinion, but that's just mine. What's yours? What do you think about all this? Are you mad? Would you like to come at me for liking my own car? Leave in the comments below. <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you like this video, be sure to give a thumbs up and YouTube doesn't display the thumbs down button, so who cares? <laughs>